Welcome back to r slash life stories where today OP tries to buy a new house in a nice neighborhood only to be told that she is not allowed to buy a house here because she is single and has no kids. If you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe to join our awesome community and without any further ado let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled trying to buy a house as a single child free woman. This happened yesterday and I am still fuming. My friend, married with two kids, moved into a house in a guarded community about two years ago. I am the godmother of her daughter and visit them frequently. I love her place and the whole community and when she mentioned that her neighbors are selling their home, I got in contact with them immediately. This was in February, I've been looking into buying a house for quite some time now. As I work from home, no MLM, I was looking for a larger space to set up a proper office and maybe even a room where I can do woodworking and other stuff that makes a lot of dirt. And that place was perfect. Last house on the land, so only one neighbor, my friend, close to the city, mountains and forests nearby for long walks with the pub. And a garden to finally start growing exciting things like herbs, potatoes and lettuce. After talking to the owner who knew me from visits, I had to get in touch with the other homeowners because they needed to approve the new homeowner. Whatever I thought, I had met most of them before and got along with all of them. I got invited to a brunch thing and even brought my secret recipe chocolate chip cookies. It was a lovely Sunday and all went well, or so I thought. Yesterday my friend called to tell me that they did not want me there because, and I am still raging, they don't want a partying, wild single girl, I'm in my mid 30s, in the neighborhood and are scared that I would bring in dangerous people like child abusers. They believe something is really wrong with me, otherwise I would clearly be married with kids and they don't want their community to become a ghetto for junkies. Mind you, I have not been to a party in over a decade and my Friday nights are usually spent with reading books and a bottle of wine. My friend and her husband tried to reason with them, but to no avail. And to top it all off, the woman who was the most vocal about me being a danger to the peace of the community had the audacity to call me and ask for the recipe of my cookies. And I might have told her the secret ingredient was a quiet house and a sprinkle of cocaine, but after being in quarantine for almost two months, I could not get myself to be fake nice. Edit to clear a few things up, this was not an HOA, not sure if those even exist in my country, but the owners had decided at one point that they would vote on new owners slash renters together and I am pretty sure if I would send in a higher offer the owner would sell it to me anyway but after all that I am so not moving there. There was also no broker slash realtor involved in the process. I am also not taking any legal action mostly for the sake of my friend who I love dearly. Also I am pretty certain any lawyer would laugh into my face and then charge me for that. It's a bad thing to have happened but well, now I know that these kinds of communities are not for me and I will be looking somewhere else, which probably will be way cheaper and with hopefully less noisy children and nosy neighbors. And as you can see guys, it is not always the horrible HOAs, sometimes neighborhood communities are just awful. Update to the trying to buy a house as a single CF woman story. Update, a couple days after my friend had called and told me all about it, I got an email from the owner informing me that they had decided to sell the house to someone else as their offer was better than mine. Obviously they are full of crap, but I responded professionally, wishing them good luck with their move. Today I got a call from them telling me the other buyer withdrew their offer and asked if I was still interested in buying their house. Mind you, my friend already gave me a heads up. The current owners already made their down payment for their new place and should be moving in a couple of weeks and due to the virus finding a buyer is hard and they cannot afford to postpone selling any longer. They decided to go behind the back of their neighbors and offer me the house even though they are fully aware of the situation and their feelings towards me. I told them that my friend had already told me about the real reason behind the decision and I was so not interested. They tried to sweet talk me, telling me that it would blow over and the neighbors just needed to get to know me and it was only half as bad. I told them my decision was made and that I was looking elsewhere. They then offered me a 10% discount which only goes to show how desperate they are selling the place. 
The call lasted for almost an hour. I was nice but firm. I am currently looking into buying land and I am already in touch with two architecture firms, customizable prefab homes, building also sounds way more fun. I also contacted a realtor and she is fantastic. She advised me to wait a couple of months as asking prices for real estate will most likely drop due to financial repercussions of the pandemic slash lockdown. And by the way guys, huge shout out to the damn scooter drivers outside with their modified exhausts. Anyway, I'm currently chilling in my city flat, enjoying a mimosa even though I should probably be working. And thanks to all of you for ranting with me, hope you are all well and healthy and not pregnant. And guys, by the way, in case you are wondering about the whole not wanting to be pregnant, not having kids, etc., child free here, child free there, these stories are from the subreddit called r slash child free, which is essentially a community comprised of people who decided they don't want to have children. But then again, that is not really the reason why I am reading the stories, I just think they are kind of similar sometimes to r slash entitled people and nobody else reads these stories, so I think they are quite interesting. Please let me know what you think about them in the comments. Update number 2 to the trying to buy a house as a single CF woman story. So ladies and gentlemen and people of all genders, grab yourself a cup of tea or a glass of wine because I've got news for you. Let's start with giving the people some names because otherwise this will be kind of confusing. My friends, let's call them Belle and Sebastian, have bought their house soon a couple of years ago. A couple of weeks later the now house seller, let's call her Karen, moved into the house next to my friends. All good, Karen and her brats want to move to a bigger place now and apparently already purchased their home without selling their old one first. After my last update, April 28th, Karen called me again and tried to sweet talk me into buying her home. I declined, that was it for a few days. On Saturday, May 2nd, I went to visit Belle and Sebastian, we chilled in their garden, ate cake and had a couple of glasses of wine. And then Karen suddenly shows up at the fence. There is some polite chit chat, I wish her all the best, nothing further. On Monday, May 4th, I get a call from Karen again. She is now offering to compensate me for my moving expenses and would take care of a couple of changes I wanted done at the house, hideous yellow kitchen with sunflower tiles, that I had asked them to remove and basically there are no wooden floors in that place. They put tiles everywhere. I declined again telling her that I've already made my decision and I am currently looking for a piece of land to actually build my own house. A day later I get an email from Karen, I'm a nice person and I hardly ever get angry, but yeah, I was feeling more and more irritated by that woman. She sent me a list of all the things that could go wrong while building a house and it would be safer for me to buy one. I leave the email unanswered. Over the course of the next couple of days Karen keeps on calling and emailing me. I eventually blocked her number, I then get a call from a number I don't know and as this is a business phone I pick up and it is, you guessed it, Karen. I ask her politely to please stop bothering me and to put all her energy into finding someone who actually wants her house. Karen keeps talking, I eventually hang up, this went on until May 10th. Yesterday, May 11th morning, I get an email from Karen, subject reading, We are accepting your offer, welcome to your new home. I am kind of confused. I open it up before I even had my first cup of joe, whatever that is, I'm not sure, and there's Karen telling me that they have accepted my official offer and are now preparing everything for the sale. Some pseudo legal jargon added saying my offer was binding as it was official, even though I never actually made one, but well. And official offers were officially binding under, and I kid you not, the house and home offer and buying law. After refusing to give this woman any more of my time, I called my lawyer, handed all that stuff over and for a whopping 400 bucks she wrote Karen an email saying something like, lol, what the hell? Go F yourself, but in like proper legal terms. Also, Karen keeps harassing Belle and Sebastian on a daily, if not hourly basis, trying to argue with them that they should convince me to move in. They are pretty cool with it though, but keep joking that they will be kidnapping me as soon as my house is done so they can have the place for themselves. I hope this was the last of it, but until then, enjoy your lives. 
And guys, I forgot to mention, it would be an absolute honor if you could subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on if you haven't already. This would make me very happy and it would help my channel tremendously. Thank you so much in advance and now let's continue with the stories. And the next one is titled, You're going on vacation? Take my kids with you! My boyfriend's cousin, his paternal uncle's daughter, has four children. Each of her kids is the personification of the word bratty, the said cousin refuses to discipline them and constantly makes excuses for their behavior. She is also very judgmental of our decision to not have kids. She has often made some snide comments towards me, implying that I am the selfish one who is depriving my boyfriend of the joys of raising kids. For these reasons and for her generally entitled behavior, my boyfriend had cut ties with her. However, when he and I visited his parental home three days ago for his parents' anniversary celebration, we ran into her again. My boyfriend's dad had urged him to use this occasion to mend bridges with the cousin. So we both tried to make nice and engaged in small talk with her. During our conversation boyfriend mentioned that we were leaving for Melbourne for vacation in a few days. At this point cousin's eyes lit up. Oh, that sounds like so much fun, she said. My husband and I haven't gone anywhere since our honeymoon. She whined some more about how hard it is for them with four kids, if only they could afford such luxuries etc. I could tell where this was going, my boyfriend probably felt sorry for her and being the kind and generous soul that he is, offered to buy them a weekend in a resort in Mount Abu, a hill station in the Indian state of Rajasthan. Cousin, face crunched up, that's nice, but why can't you just take us to Melbourne with you? Boyfriend, getting a bit annoyed but still patient, well, we want to spend some time alone together, plus we will be meeting some close friends there. Besides, Mount Abu is a beautiful place, your kids will love it. Cousin, I still don't see why you cannot take us to Australia, you being so selfish, going on this great trip and sticking your family with a cheap weekend getaway. Boyfriend's mom, cousin's name, he's making a very generous offer, either take it or leave it. Cousin, wearing the expression that morons wear when they think they've had a bright idea, Oh, I know. Why don't my husband and I go to Mount Abu and you can take our kids to Melbourne? Me? What? Cousin? It's a great idea. The kids can have fun in Melbourne with you too and my hubby and I can enjoy a peaceful weekend. This way the kids can actually spend some time with their uncle. You never make time for them. Boyfriend, I'm offering for the last time. It's either the weekend in Mount Abu or nothing at all. And why the hell would we ruin our vacation taking care of your kids? Cousin? How can you say that? My kids are so well behaved. You will have so much fun spending time with them. Besides, my husband and I could really use some quiet time together. You and her don't have any responsibilities. You have no idea how hard it is to raise four kids. You can afford this trip. I don't see why you won't share with family. Boyfriend, one more word and you are losing my Mount Abu offer. On hearing this, the cousin shut up. We all had dinner together and she was mercifully quiet. If only her kids had followed her example. You would think this would be the end of it, but no. We had seriously underestimated her dedication to her Karenness. On the morning of the day of our departure, the cousin showed up at my apartment with the kids in tow. I was shocked to see her, of course, and asked if something was wrong. She smiled and said, I'm just here to drop off the kids, you're leaving tonight, right? After taking a second to recover from the shock, I asked, did you fall and hit your head on something? We told you we were not taking your kids with us. What part of that did you not understand? She then tried to convince me that my boyfriend had called her later on and had agreed to take her kids. I knew this was BS and called it as such. Cousin became enraged and asked if I was going to break her kid's heart, why would I break our promise and how boyfriend and I could be so cold. I called my boyfriend and after telling him what was going on, I turned on the speaker. My boyfriend proceeded to chew her out brutally right in front of her kids, telling her he would no longer pay for their weekend getaway and that this is exactly the kind of behavior that had made him cut ties with her. She tried to get a word in, but he wouldn't let her. Cousin took her kids and stormed off. Boyfriend and I are having a laugh over this and are still wondering what made her think that this plan would ever work. Update to the you're going on vacation, take my kids with you story. This is the follow up on the crazy cousin story. This morning my boyfriend and I were on FaceTime with his sister. She told us all about what went down on the Karen front after boyfriend and I left. 
Apparently, CC, crazy cousin, had gone crying to her father and a few other relatives, including boyfriend's sister, to complain about how my boyfriend and I set her up to be humiliated in front of her kids and how her kids are heartbroken. Boyfriend's sister simply hung up on her, the other relatives either laughed it off or tried to explain to her why she was in the wrong, all except her father. Her dad had the gal to go to boyfriend's parents' house and yell at them for making his daughter and his grandkids cry. He whined on about how they had raised my boyfriend and his sister to be selfish, how they needed to start acting like family and a whole bunch of other nonsense. At first my boyfriend's dad tried to stay calm and explain to his brother what has actually happened, but as it turned out, boyfriend's uncle's logic receptors had stopped functioning a long time ago. He continued to whine and demanded that my boyfriend fulfill his promise of paying for his daughter's family's weekend in Mount Abu. My boyfriend's dad is a very patient man, his mother is not. She never hesitates to shut down this kind of stuff. She tore into cousin's dad telling him his daughter was a good for nothing piece of trash who thinks the world owes her something. She also said that the only reason she's allowed to come to their boyfriend's parents place is because of their concern for her children. She gave boyfriend's uncle an ultimatum, either his daughter would apologize to my boyfriend and I or they would cut ties with her completely. The uncle is a chauvinistic a-hole and tried to tell boyfriend's dad to get his wife under control. Boyfriend's dad simply told him to get out and to not come back unless it was to apologize. My boyfriend's parents have often helped his cousin and her husband financially and routinely buy gifts for their kids and they have never asked for anything in return. Boyfriend's mother usually is a very kind and gentle lady, but the moment anyone attacks her kids, she turns into the mama bear to end all mama bears. Boyfriend's cousin probably does not want to fall out of favor with his parents. His sister knew that we may get a few annoying phone calls from her so she could apologize during our vacation. So she took it upon herself to make it clear to the cousin that she is not to disturb us in any way. We of course thanked her for being such an MVP. And guys, unfortunately, we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. And if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube, where I upload exclusive Reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from YouTube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.